aspect of what I plan today, I plan three. Or well, usually the Holy Spirit would take over. I started a series last Sunday on the dimensions of faith. How many of you remember? How many of you remember the dimensions of faith? Okay. And I started by telling us that there are different dimensions. And please understand when I say dimensions, that the dimensions are by no means absolute hierarchy in faith. They are not echelons of faith. Neither are they gradients or milestones in your faith. No. They are purely descriptive by revelation of what God has shown to me. That there are different dimensions. When I say dimension, different levels of expression. Different levels of application of faith. When you talk, when you hear the word faith, you could look at the word faith as a noun, an abstract noun. You could also look at faith as a verb, an action word, where it comes into believing. So when you look at these different applications, so for example, if you say someone has given their life to Christ and is now walking, uh, walking in the way of the Lord, you say that person is in faith. Do you all agree with me? Okay, that's the noun aspect of it because you are now in faith. But if they sin and they fall away, what do you call them? You say you have fallen what? Out of faith. That faith as a noun is different from faith believing God for breakthrough. Is somebody getting what I'm trying to say? That's what I'm saying. There are different dimensions. So I started by saying to us last Sunday that the very first one is the saving faith. That is the one that where you believe in the Lord Jesus and you are saved. Just like the, the Bible says that that jailer, that centurion in the book of Acts was asking Paul and Silas, said, what do I need to do to be saved? Then they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. And what? Your household. So that saving faith is very important because it is relationship type of faith. That is the faith that helps you establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus. When you don't have that faith, you cannot operate in the verb faith. When you don't have that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to move mountains is not going to work. You can say all you want to say, but it ain't going to work. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. That's why I say, to as men that believe him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Even to them that believe in his name. That tells you that there is a place for relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of what? So if you don't establish a relationship with the author of faith, by engaging that saving faith, the, the other types of faith, you cannot have it. Is somebody getting my point? So listen to me. It does, we are not the people that pray the most. I hope you know there are religions that pray more than we do. So if it is by prayer that things work, then some of us that don't pray, we just believe God for some things and God just does some things. But just because you accepted Jesus into your life, you, you now operate under grace. So some things just by grace just work for you. Because why? You are in faith. It's just like a man, you don't know how to fly, but you bought an aircraft. Are you flying? Oh, of course you are flying. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? Why are you flying? Because you are what? In the air, what? You are in the aircraft. Do you need to be in the cockpit? No. Do you need to know how to fly? No. But you did the right thing by engaging in the flight. Whether by buying with your money. The same thing with your faith. You have to purchase with you believing in Jesus. If you don't engage by believing in Jesus Christ. All the benefits that comes with grace, you can't have it. That's why the Bible says it's for faith that it might be by what? By grace. So you need that faith to engage grace. So hear me, if you, are, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot enjoy the benefit of that saving grace, that saving faith. That saving faith is what guarantees you of eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the most important. Because that is the one that talks about your end point, your destination. Every other type of faith is for this side of eternity. The only other faith that is important for the other side is saving faith. 
Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That is why I'm saying this. Make sure that you maintain that right relationship with the Lord. If I have some time, I don't have enough time, but I want to say this. It's important to also keep in mind that even in this saving faith, you can have a living faith or you could have a dead faith. And that's why you discuss some people, yes, they believe in Jesus, but nothing is going on in their life. You know why? Because their faith is dead. I was going to go deep into it in first service last week, but I didn't have the time. But let me help you understand what is the difference between a living faith and a dead faith. How many of you want to know the difference between a living faith and a dead faith? Go to James chapter 2. Go to James chapter 2. I'm, I'm going quick now. I'm just, I'm going quick. I'm going quick. James chapter 2 and verse 14. James chapter 2 and verse 14. If you are there, let me hear you say amen. amen. Okay, read it in NIV. NIV would help you a lot. Everybody, make sure you have your Bible and get ready. What good is it? Did you see that? Yeah. My brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have what? Faith. Please speak, speak to me. Come on, come on, talk to me. If they claim to have what? Faith. Have faith, but have what? No deeds. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical need, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by what? Action. Come on, speak to me, church. If it is not accompanied by what? Action. By action, it is what? So that is why we are doing avalanche of love. Because any faith that we express that is not backed up with an action is dead faith. That means we are coming here to act holy but we are not really holy. We are coming here to speak in tongues but those tongues have no value. So I'm giving you an, an opportunity or God is giving us an opportunity through this anniversary to make our faith a living faith. Not a dead faith. Haven't you noticed that any time an unbeliever see ministries begin to do things like that, they become touched. Oh, am I talking to somebody? They become touched because all of a sudden it touches their heart. That is when your faith is living. If you like speaking tongues, they look at you like you are crazy. You are just speaking gibberish because they're asking you, what are you talking about? Those speeches don't mean anything except they can feel the touch. So ladies and gentlemen, if our faith would be relevant, it must be backed up by action. We have a lot of churches all over the world that engage in big projects but they are useless to the community go and look at the ministry of jesus nobody was hungry even when the disciples said let's send them away he said we can't send them away you can't be eating on a wonderful platter on your table and you are eating all chicken and everything and there are people around you that don't have anything your faith is dead Jesus is alive but your own faith is dead we must be a church that back up our faith with living deeds did Jesus not give the story of a Samaritan the good Samaritan. The priest came, saw the man that was wounded, behaved like he did. He said, oh, I don't want the touch of this man. I don't know whether he has uh, whatever disease. I'm going to pass by. The Levite came, but there was a Samaritan. Why did God say, why did Jesus specifically say Samaritan? Because these are people as it were that we don't think that they are religious enough. Heaven will be a place of surprise. I'm telling you, some bishops will not make it. But tell your neighbor, in the name of Jesus, I must make it. Better tell them, I say, in the name of Jesus, I will make the first flights. In the name of Jesus, I will make it. 
If you believe it, wave your hands and shout a big hallelujah. That's living faith. Go to the next verse. I'll show you what James said. He said, but someone will say, you have faith. I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. And I will show you my faith by what? So truly it is by your deeds that you truly show that you have the saving faith. Not by coming to church. Not by attending five services. Not by teaching Sunday school. You know what? I'm telling you. Sometimes, I, that's why I keep trying try to tell even the leaders say better. I said, listen to me. Position is irrelevant. I don't care what they call you. It's what God calls you that matters. If you like, call you right, Reverend, on, on, on great deacon. Don't call me nothing so that I can enter that place quickly. You know, there are some titles that can slow you down. I came with fire tonight. Nothing will slow you down this year. I, can, I said nothing will slow you down this year. Any plan of the enemy to hijack your flights by the power of the Holy Ghost is shall be destroyed by fire. Shout a big amen. Please pull out the scripture. But someone will say, I have it. Say, go, go to verse 19. You believe that there is one God. Tell you about good. This is an American something. You believe that there is a good. Amen. Tell you about good. Amen. If you came from a country like that, they'll say good. <laughs> even, listen to me, even what? Even what? Even the demons believe and they what? They shudder so that you believe is not enough. Demons believe in Jesus. They just don't have the ability to do good works. So telling me that you believe and you come here but you don't have the ability to do good works. Your faith is dead. May God don't make us have members in this place. Oh, Shaba Yegega. That come here every day and they act like Christians and speak Christianese but their faith is dead. Tell your neighbor, that is not me. That's not me. <laughs> keep the scripture up. Keep the scripture up. They shut up. Go to verse 20. He said, you foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father, Doseba? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous? Listen to this. By what? For what he did when he offered his son, what? Isaac on the altar. So God judged Abraham's faith by the very fact that he had deeds. God weighs your faith every day when you come to Bethel by the things that you do. Not even the things that you don't do. Oh, Lord, they get me. Do you know the difference between that? God is going to judge you by the things that you do and not by the things you did not do. God is going to judge you by the good things that you did, not by the fornication you did not do. Oh, Sabayeka. Is somebody hearing me? I don't fornicate. I don't steal. I don't lie. But I don't have any good works. You don't pass an exam by the questions you don't answer. Who, who, who? I speak to your life. This year, good things will begin to happen through you. Hey, I don't know. Hey, sha, ba, ba, ba. I said in the name of Jesus, this year, good works will come through your hand. Good works will come through your hands. Good works will come through your hands. Shout, yeah. You see his faith and his actions were working what? So your faith and your actions they work what? If it is lonely it will sink. It takes Jesus and Peter 
to stay afloat. No, I don't get that. You need your good works to stabilize your faith. If not, the seesaw. That's why some people, today their faith is high. And tomorrow is down. You know why? No good works. And his faith was made what? Complete. If you read it in King James, he said his faith was made perfect. That is to say your faith can be imperfect. Yes. No faith. But faith that is perfect is perfected by good works. That is why we have workers. So if you are in this church, you are not a worker. You have imperfect faith. Some people are still thinking, whether should I give offering? God judges you each time you come. You, you may say, oh, pastor, just offer. What did Abraham offer? Right. When you come, God looks at what you offer to perfect your faith. Each time you come here, you just show up like, God, I ain't got nothing. Bring your pot. Oof. Bring your shoe. Where I grew up, I remember there was an usher. If he doesn't have offering, he will take his Bible. He will put it in the offering bowl. God is all I got. You can, that's why he said, do not come to my presence empty handed. Because your expression of faith comes by what? God looks at your sacrifice. That is why you discovered that from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 4, he weighed faith by Abel. Even though Abraham was the father of faith, the example of faith was able. Go look. God blew my mind in Jerusalem. He said, go look. He said, each time I do this journey of faith, sometimes I start alphabetically. Don't let believe me. Oh, shut up. Oh, Sabaya. He started with A, D. It seemed like Adam did not make it. He said, let's go A, B. He didn't make it. Now looked at C, came. Came, blew it. <laughs> no. Ha, ha. Then all of a sudden, he went to E. Enoch. When he got to Enoch, Enoch was too fast. Enoch. <laughs> then God said, no, 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 no. Let's go back. And started again. With who? A, B. Oh, God will see you and see you as an expression of faith. Let me finish this scripture. I can't finish tonight. Because if I, if I take you Show the show. He said the scripture of Israel was called. Listen, and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God. And he was credited to him as what? So he believed God to the extent that his acts became right. He became so right that God said, You are now righteous. So a faith that is backed up with good deeds is what God equal to right. Righteousness, not holiness. Righteousness. And he was called what? So God, people that become God's friends are people that are not only in faith, but do good works. All good and perfect gift comes from what? About. So anytime you do good deeds, you mirror God. Let me show you this last one. I will take communion and we'll go home. Are you, can you feel the presence of God? As you shout amen, receive your answer to prayer. As you shout amen right now, every sacrifice you have made unto God, 
you have said in the sanctuary from the day you were born and God has not responded to you as God had respect for the sacrifice of Abel may heaven have respect for your sacrifice Twenty-four. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by what, by not by faith alone. It's considered righteous, not by faith alone, not by believing that God can do all things, but by what they do, in addition to what they believe. Go, and I will shock you now. In the same way, this way gets good. In the same way, was not evil Rahab. The who? who? Don't say that word in church. Rahab the prostitute. If you have some translation, they call her Rahab the harlot. Ladies and gentlemen, Rahab the harlot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rahab the harlot, God mentioned him in, her in the Bible. In the Bible. Look at that. The Bible says, for even the Rahab, the, the prostitute, considered was considered righteous. For he, right, what? Righteous. For what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different what? So even though her state was in a different direction, she knew what the different direction was. Go as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is what? Yes. Ask your neighbor, do you got do you have dead faith? Yes. Can you see that Rahab the Harlot? Though she was a prostitute, by that single act of good, made her a matriarch through whom Jesus came. Made her a matriarch through whom David came. Through whom the wisest man came. Now listen to me. I pray that you don't be a believer that say they have faith. Or no good works. I challenge everybody in this ministry. If you are hearing the sound of my voice, this is a heaven's call to you. Enough of church without good deeds. Enough. Let God see that we are ready to back our faith with good deeds. Not only will God honor our faith and cause it to be a living faith, the Lord will bless us indeed and count it unto us as righteousness. Do you receive the word of God tonight? Clap your hands and give God praise. Rise up to your feet in the name of Jesus. I want you to rededicate yourself to God. I want you to speak to God and say, Lord, from today, I want my faith to be living. I want you to pray earnestly from your heart. I want you to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't want to have dead faith. Go la pranzi kataya. Libro zeteke teke bashia. In the name of Jesus, give us the grace, give us the strength, oh God, to be people that have a living faith, to, to back our faith with good works that will bring glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, lift your right hand up wherever you are all over this place. Say, Lord, I will serve you. I will live for you. I will obey you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Somebody shout a big amen. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. I'm going to pray for the first set of people. You don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Put your hands down, please. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to accept him into your life. You want to confess him as your Lord. You're going to say, you want to say, Pastor, I want to begin afresh with the Lord. I want to have this saving faith. I want to establish a right relationship with the Lord. I want to pray with you. 
If you are here, you want to say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I, you don't yet know the Lord Jesus. It is time to pray for you. Anybody like that here, I want to pray for you. Anybody like that here, I want to pray for you. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Your second prayer, you want to say, Lord, from today, I will do good works. I will serve you. I will not be idle. I must back up my faith with good works. Shoot your two hands in surrender. Let God see that hand. You're going to say, Lord, I'm not going to be idle in your house. I'm not going to be idle. I refuse to be idle. I must do good works. I want you to tell God today. I want you to confess it before God. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, from today going forward, I will do good works. I will do good works. I will do good works. Lord, I will do good deeds. I will honor you with my talent. I will honor you with my sacrifice. I will honor you with my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed be your name. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me hear the loudest amen today. Father, tonight, lift, put those hands up. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. You have spoken to us. We have heard your word. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bless our hearts. Give us the grace, oh God, to back our faith with the right deeds. That every day of our lives, oh God, we would have living faith that will bring glory and praise to your name. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Somebody shout a big amen. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. We pray that this message ministered to your heart. If you are watching this message and you do not know Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this simple prayer with us. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died and rose for my sins. I denounce and renounce any other God that I may have put before you. Jesus, save my life. If you said that simple prayer, we want to welcome you into the body of Christ. God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Join us at Bethel Covenant Assembly of God Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at 6812 Bandera Road in San Antonio, Texas. And be sure to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.